Hello. <laughs> Five. Hello. Uh, I'm Thundercat. This is GM Patch Nasty. We are talking D and D, episode twenty-one. Classes, part five, two. I wrote two for some reason in the title. Hey, I gotta okay. change that. I'll change it's that right. as we go. I'll, I'll, yep. Well, we'll get there. It's just real good. Part five, not two. I thought it says twenty episode twenty-one. There it goes. I just watched it get changed. <laughs> that fuck with my brain so much. <laughs> Part five, episode twenty-one. Hi everyone. We're talking about rangers and fighters. Uh, last week we talked about who did we talk about? Druids and we, and sorcerers. One. Sorcerers, yes, that's right. Sorcerers, druids. About all the cool meta magics that you could do. Yeah, that was fun. That was a good one. Uh, and if you go back to part three, two, and one, we've got the rest of them. Clerics, wizards, bards. Next week's going to be what? Paladins and... Rogues. Rogues. That's our last one. Rouge. Our last two. Rouge. Uh, maybe we'll do a, a Patreon. Behind the scenes, we'll talk about the Artificer or something. Just to kind of like get some stuff going on. <laughs> What's happening, what Phoenix Force? Phoenix? Oh my god, be still my heart. I can't deal with all the sexiness on screen right now. <laughs> yes, we are two very high charisma characters. High is definitely there. Yeah, charismatic is definitely there. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, let's st get started, I guess. Get, get right into it. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I'm too thrown off by your very loud Baywatch shirt. You like I've that? been staring at it for. I Hold do. On. I do. Hold on. Uh, Can you see the back? Digga, digga, do. Malibu Beach Patrol. <laughs> digga, digga, do. You were at high. Exactly. D, D, you got it. You got it. So we're doing fighters first. Yeah, we're going to start uh, with fighters. Uh, these for are it. your. They're your basic. These, these are. Probably the easiest class to start off with in D and D. Um, yes, I want that. <laughs> uh, it's also probably one of the best classes to dip into if you're going to multi class. For those of you who want to multi class, this is a very good one to take a five level dump into having an extra attack for certain things like a wizard. Um, but for the quick don't, build on the fighter, don't oh. take a level five dump though. Ah, that's a different. Five, yeah, that's maybe. a different story. Ah, uh, okay. Sorry, <laughs> I was getting all to turn me. <laughs> so start off by either making strength or dex your highest ability score, depending on whether you want to focus on melee or archery or for nest weapon. That's going to be very key in your build. Your next highest short score could be constitution or intelligence if you plan on being the eldritch knight martial archetype, which is the uh, wizardy type fighter. It gets kind of cool. Uh, second, choose the soldier background. Soldier background is one of the easiest backgrounds to pick because straightforward, you'll follow the adventure is how I picture it as a DM, but that's never how it happens. Um, you start off with a D10 for your hit dice, uh, which is then you get your max hit points at le that level is 10 plus your constitution. Uh, and after that, you get 1D10 or 6 plus your con mod. Proficient in all armor, shields. Uh, you're proficient in we uh, simple weapons and martial weapons. No tools. Your saving throws are strength and constitution. And you get to choose two skills from acrobatics, animal handling, athletics, history, insight, intimidation, perception, and survival. So you get a good range of skills to choose from. And this is where um, a lot of like your fighter, your starting equipment, this is where you'll base most of your fighting styles off of. Uh, because you can either start with chainmail or leather armor, longbow, and 20 arrows. So that's key. Next, you would get a martial weapon, 
and a shield, or two martial weapons. Next, you would get a light crossbow in 20 bolts, or two hand axes. Lastly, you would get either a Dungeoneer's pack or an Explorer's pack. Um, and once again, packs are always typically included. I had to think about it there for a second. And like you were saying, depending on what kind of fighter you want to be, your equipment is kind of based on that. Like, you want to be a long range fighter, do you want to be an arcane fighter, or do you want to be a, an up close fighter? Those, those weapons and the equipment are kind of showing you the two different ways you can go. Well, because the thing is, too, like, you could take the leather armor, the longbow, and 20 arrows, and then with the next one, take the martial, uh, a long sword and a shield, and still right. be well-rounded but you'd be at the verse that you'd still have the high decks for your good ac bonus but you wouldn't have that solid chain mail defense but you could yeah. be sneak right um you want to talk about fighting styles this is what you get bare bare bones yeah um at first level you are you are allowed a particular fighting style uh you get to choose one of the following options and you get to take another one uh, later, I believe, another level later, a few le levels nope. later. I don't think so. I looked over it quite a while. You only get the one fighting style. I think. Well, Rangers I know the Rangers get. Too. The Rangers might be able to get two. Yep. Uh, so the first one is archery. Once again, depending on how you want to play your fighter, you could be a long range archer. Uh, you get a plus two to attack rolls you make with ranged weapons, uh, or you could. Do defense and get a plus one bonus to AC if you're wearing armor. Um, so that's pretty sweet. Get some AC. Uh, you can do dueling where you, when you're wielding a melee weapon in one hand and no other weapons, you gain a plus two bonus to damage rolls for that weapon. Now on the offhand, you do have like your more strengthy base sides of things like great weapon fighting. When you roll a one or a two on a damage die, you could make with a melee weapon that you're wielding with two hands, like a great axe or a long sword with two hands. Uh, you can re-roll the die and must use the new roll die, uh, new roll, even if it's a one or a two, the weapon must have a two-handed or versatile property for you to gain this benefit. Uh, if you're not using something two hands and you're using a shield, when a creature you can take protection. Uh, when a creature you see attacks Attacks a target other than you was in five feet with you. You can use your reaction to impose disadvantage on the attack roll. You must be wielding a shield. And lastly, the cool one for you dually wielders, two-weapon fighting. When you engage in two-weapon fighting, you can add your ability modifier to the damage of the second attack, which comes in clutch. Uh, you also get second wind at first level. You have a limited well of stamina that you can draw on to protect you from harm. On your turn, you can use a bonus action to regain hit points equal to 1d10 plus your fighter level. Once you've used this feature, you must finish a short or long rest before you can use it again. So yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's your beginning. Just level one. First level fighter. So this is typically one of the classes, like if I'm making this from level one, I'll usually level up the character and then take the equipment as opposed to taking the equipment and then level up the character. Be like, hmm, do I want to use a shield? Because I'll take protection because that would be neat to be like that kind of knight or squire or I could be an archer. It's one of those classes where it's kind of a little bit backwards at the beginning and then it's straightforward after that. Well, I always go and do my um, background too before I even do my yeah, class. So, so if I'm going to be a fighter, I pick my background with the fighter first, and then put my background information in, then put the fighter class in, because you get skills automatically in your background yeah. and different features. Or proficiencies. Yep. Yeah. So, that way you can put your class together with your background, and it kind of works. It makes it a little easier too. You're not going back and deleting things you've already put down. But, but you get to, we're now you get to learn two. things. Oh. <laughs> yep. Level two. You get the fighter's bread and butter. Uh, you get action surge. You can push yourself beyond normal limits for a moment. On your turn, you can take an additional action. It does not cost anything to do so. Uh, once you use this feature, however, you must finish a short or long rest before you can use it again. 
Once you hit 17th level towards the top tiers, you can use it twice before arrest, but only once on the same turn. Which, um, when we get up to higher levels after 5, you will see why that is very, very, very mean. And DMs, feel free to add fighter classes to your NPCs, because it's always fun. At 3rd level, you get... To get your subclass, basically, your martial archetype. At third level, you choose an archetype that you strive, strive to emulate in combat styles and techniques. Choose champion, battle master, or eldritch knight, all detailed at the end of the class description. Uh, and you gain these say, at third level, seventh level, tenth level, fifteenth level, and eighteenth level. Let's go right into the first one because the first one's awesome. This is br this is the best fighter build to have a champion i think as a as a as a starting player this is probably one of the easier ones to play uh, -huh. uh -huh. along with the barbarian the fury barbarian uh the uh -huh. berserker but uh, uh because you're not casting spells and you don't need to learn a lot about the way D D is played in the background, the, the number stuff. It's really okay. easy to just kind of get into the game and play. Uh, so, if you're really new to the game, this is always a great class to start with. Um, helps you learn to be a better role player, too, because you're not really looking at your character sheet too much, because there's not a lot there. Bingo. So, go ahead. But... When you become the champion, which focuses on development of raw physical power, you get something called Improved Critical. You will want to write this at the top of your paper and remember it because every, um, at third level, your weapon attack score a critical hit on a 19 or a 20. So instead of that magical number on the 20 of the die, there are two numbers that you can get a critical with, which is absolutely um, what happens? changing. What happens when you critical hit, though? Um, depending on what else you have for levels and things, um, a, a multitude of things, but base, you'll either double the damage or double the dice roll. Depends on your DM, uh, you'll roll dice and then double that and then add your ability modifier, or you'll roll double the number of dice. So if you, let's say, uh, critical hit on a great axe would be a D12, you'd roll 2D12 plus your strength modifier. And that would get that. Yep. I'm I'm old fashioned. Roll the dice, double it, add the I like, thing. Let's. Move I on. like rolling dice. I think everyone likes. They buy the dice, and let them roll them. Exactly. It, it's it's all up to you. Is as long as you don't take forever picking out dice. That's all I ask. Okay, um, let's get into but, battle master. Oh, this is big. This is long. Yeah. So battle master. At third level, you get to uh, emulate an archetypal battlemaster, employ martial techniques passed down through the generations. Combat is an academic field, sometimes including subjects beyond battle, such as weaponsmithing and calligraphy. Not every fighter absorbs the lessons of history, theory, and artistry. So the the battlemaster is like combat superiority. You you gain different uh, maneuvers and moves. Uh, that you roll the dice for. So, maneuvers. You learn three maneuvers of your choice, which are detailed in the maneuver maneuvers below. Uh, you learn two additional maneuvers of your choice at every level for the martial archety archetype, 7th, 10th, and 15th. Uh -huh. uh, your superiority dice. You have four superiority dice, which are D8s. A superiority dice is expanded when, when you use it. You regain all of your expanded superiority dice when you finish a short or long rest. You'll be using the superiority dice to enhance the uh, maneuvers that you do or to see if you pass or fail these maneuvers. Um, your saving throws are, are quite close to like all of the wizard and bard DC saving throws. You get your 8 plus your proficiency bonus plus your ability score modifier that you're using well, for dexterity. I mean, that's, that's a big, but that's still, that's a but it's still change. a, but it's still a DC like a caster. 
Yeah, it is. It is. But it's built the same way because well, that's because it's strength. Well, yeah, you get to uh -huh. choose from two. I guess that's not that's a little bit better. I guess um, a little bit better. Yes. So at third level, you gain proficiency with one type of artisan's tools of your choice. And so let's take a peek at some of the maneuvers. And you get the three maneuvers. There's a lot of them. Yeah, there is. Um, I would certainly recommend taking a peek at this on uh, page 74 of the Player's Handbook. I know that this is not one of the freebies that they give you. This is probably the reason. Um, but it's a lot like some of the Warlock, uh, the Warlock invocations. Yeah, uh, I would take one we... Parry. Parry's great. When another creature damages you with a melee attack, you can use your reaction and expend one superiority die to reduce the damage by the number you roll on superiority die plus your dexterity, dexterity modifier. Uh, disarming attack's always a fun one. You want to read that one? Uh, yes. When you hit a creature with a weapon attack, you can expend one superiority die to attempt to disarm the target, forcing it to drop one item of your choice that it's holding. You add the superiority die to the attack's damage roll, and the target must make a strength saving throw. On a failed save, it drops the object you choose. The object lands at its feet. Uh, another one of my favorites is uh, Riposte. That one is, uh, that's a mean one to have as a DM. Uh, when a creature misses you with a melee attack, you can use your reaction, expend one superiority die to make a we melee weapon attack against the creature. If you hit, add the superiority die to the attack's damage. That's kind so of a having um, parry and repost. You could, if you get hit, you can parry. If you get, if you get missed with an attack, you can repost. <laughs> it's like it depends on what you want to do. That's the yeah. thing. If you want to, or take yeah, both if, of you them. Know, someone's, mm -hmm. uh, it's a, it's a reaction. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying you though, can, like they're both you can reactions. Take both of them. Yeah, but you can only you can, use the one. Right, but the guy missed you. All right, well, I'm gonna hit you back this time. Oh nope, he hit me this time. The next round. Oh, well, I'm hitting it back again. All right, Keep attacking. Uh, that's level three. What well, do we, we get we, at level... No, oh, there's still oh, one no. more. Oh, we, yeah, I know there is. I was trying to go. The Eldritch Knight. Uh, the Eldritch Knight, uh, welcome to spellcasting for fighters. Uh, 101, hi, I am GM Patch Nasty. I am the headmaster. Uh, when you reach third level, you can cast spells. Uh, you augment your martial prowess with the ability to cast spells. See chapter 10. We've gone over this with wizards and druids and bards and sorcerers and warlocks. Oh my. Yep. But you learn two cantrips of your choice from the wizard spell list. That's kind of cool. Uh, spell slots. The Eldritch uh, You learn a, another one at 10th level. Uh, the Eldritch Knight spellcasting table shows how many spell slots do you have to cast your wizard, spa, uh, as wizard spells. Wizard spells of first level and higher. So... You would know three spells at third level and have two first level spots, slots. And then all the way down at 20th level, you would have four first level and you would cap off at one fourth level spell slot. So it's kind of a little intro to it. You kind of get like a little a dip into the wizard spell list. You're like a mini wizard. Exactly. But uh, you can also punch is, things. That is correct. <laughs> but the thing uh, here it is. The spells you learn at 8th, 14th, and 20th level can be from any school of magic. That's, that's a big That's a big thing to remember. That's cool. Uh, whenever you gain a level in this class, you can replace a, uh, replace one of the wizard spells you know with another spell of your choice. Uh, the new spell must be from the list. Uh, it must, uh, spell slots, and it must be an abjuration or evocation spell. That's the big thing. You can only cast abjuration or evocation as an arcane or an eldritch knight. That's a big clutch. That's your spells. However, intelligence is also your spell casting ability for your wizard spells. You since you learn your spells the same way, um, spell save and attack modifier work the same way as wizards. Eight plus proficiency plus intelligence. I gilded. Uh, I gilded. Proficiency plus intelligence would be your spell attack modifier. But you also get something else at third level. You get your weapon bond. You learn yeah, a Thor. ritual that creates a... Yeah, well, uh, one, two, three... You only get two things at three from this guy. You get the spells. Uh, but you, get, you, get you, the pay, you become Thor. Yes, you do be... Kind of. 
Thor's Thor's is a little bit drawn out. This is way cooler because this just tells <laughs> us to. Uh, so but you, you don't have to. That creates you, don't have you don't have to. You create a magical uh, bond between you and your we- one weapon. You perform the ritual over the course of an hour, which can be done during the short rest. The weapon must be within your reach throughout the ritual, and at the conclusion of which you touch the weapon and forge the bond. Once you have bonded with a weapon to yourself, you cannot be disarmed of that weapon unless you are incapacitated. If it is on the same plane of existence, you can summon that weapon as a bonus action on your turn, causing it to teleport instantly to your hand. I do like Thundercat's flavor for the Thor hammer, because that's super cool. As a DM, I would try to grab it. Uh, just because, and then no one can handle it. Over to him. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> um, but you can also you can have up to two bonded weapons. You can only summon one at a time with your bonus action. If you attempt to bond with a third weapon, you must break the bond with one of the other two. That's the big thing for the Eldritch Knight. David uh, Hasselhoff. Super cool. Oh boy. <laughs> Oh, this man. is um, this is where the fighters can get really, really out of hand because we're starting off with this at fourth level, as we always do. What do we get? Yeah, um, you you get a feat if your DM school or or an ability score and improvement. <laughs> Woo! Uh, fifth level, you get extra attack. We've covered yes. that with barbarians. Yes, we uh, have. So you can hit it. You can attack twice. Instead of once. Uh, however, this will increase at later levels. Uh, 11. Well, you will increase to 3 attacks with your attack action. And then when you hit 20, the top tier one is you have 4 attacks with your attack action. When you make an attack action, you can attack 3 extra times at level 20. That's a 1, 2, 3, 4 combo right there. What if you hit a 6th um, level? You get an ability score improvement or a feat if your DM is cool. That's the that's kind of neat for a fighter. So if your DM is going to allow feats, this would be the way to enhance your fighter. This would also make it kind of your fighter with feats, um, or just round it out with the ability score improvements. Be the best fighter you can be. Oh, your proficiency cool bonus stuff, also right? line up at fifth level. Got to remember that. All right. Yes. That will be the constant. You'll, oh, your proficiency will always go up at fifth, fifth level. Fifth, ninth, thirteenth, and seventeenth. Proficiency is carried through overall XP, not class XP. So if you are a seventeen monk and a three wizard, I don't. You're know a level twenty down, character. You would have a plus six to your proficiency. Yes, you'd be a level twenty character. Correct. All right, so what's the champion get at level seven? Uh, you're a remarkable athlete. You're the goat. Uh, you can add half of your proficiency bonus roundup to any any strength, dex, or constitution check makes constitution check you make that doesn't already use your proficiency bump. So if you're not proficient in sleight of hand, you can add the half of it. Yep. In addition. When you make a lo- oh, did, would that, would you also add that to initiative bonuses? Yeah, I would. It's an initiative. It's, a, it's, an it's, ability a, dex, check. it's a dex-based ability check. Yep. So fuck me. Ah, damn. Sorry, I just broke myself with a level seven fighter just in break, my head. Uh, breaking games. Uh, in addition, when you make a running long jump, the distance you can cover increases by a number of feet equal to your strength modifier. But I have, I have a question. If you can't actually put proficiency into it, does that make it a skill base? No, but but I know, I know. It's it's that's a hot that's a hot take on D and D. I I will go ahead and I will say this: you you can enhance it in certain ways with certain feats. Your in, your ability, your your uh, your alertness with initiative. You can That's also true. enhance your passes with feats. So, can't, I don't know though. You can't actually get proficiency in initiative. Correct, but it it's an ability to be enhanced. Tech. 
not a skill. It's just a constitution check. Or a dex check. Or a strength check. So it's not even a skill. That's true. Yeah. Like, that's... I, I would allow it. Because it makes sense as a champion, you would want to be very alert on the field. So a champion alert at level 7 would always go first. I would be like, okay, I'll prep for this. Yeah. Just you wait. Just you wait. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of mirrors and traps. Oh, you think that's the man you're going to hit? No, he's behind you. He goes first. <laughs> what do you mean, mirror image? What? <laughs> All right. Uh, so, yeah, 7 is kind of neat. I just found out about that, and I just broke myself on my head. Uh, In addition, did you say did you say that he jumps too? Yeah, he's got now he's got goat legs. He's got okay. you can he's make a right jump. The goat legs. Like, goats can jump far and high and stuff. <laughs> uh, uh, for the battle master at seventh level, you get know your enemy. Uh, if you spend at least one minute observing or interacting with another creature outside combat, you can learn certain information about its capabilities compared to your own. The DM tells you if the creature is your equal, superior, or inferior in regard of the two of the following characteristics of your choice. And you get to pick uh, between your strength score, dexterity score, constitution score, armor class, current hit points, total class levels, if any, and fighter class levels, if any. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so knowing its current hit points and AC is fucking clutch. You'll figure out AC eventually, but having current hit points and constitution score, like, that would make everything tabletopping, but that's kind of the point. Yep. A uh, little bit. You also learn two new um, maneuvers. Yeah, like pushing attack. When you hit a creature with a weapon attack, you can expend a die to attempt to drive that bitch back. Uh, when you add the superiority die to the attack's damage roll, and then if the target, target is large or smaller, it must make a strength save. On a failed save, you push it up to 15 feet away from you. Yeehaw! I was thinking evasive footwork. When you Ooh, move, you that? can expend one superiority die, rolling the die, and adding the number rolled to your AC until you stop moving. That's a good one. That's a good one. So, um, here's, here's what we get at 7th level for the Eldritch Knight. This is kind of the Interesting. Uh, beginning at 7th level, when you use your action to cast a cantrip, you can also make a weapon attack as a bonus attack. So dirty. That's... So, there is a cantrip that's in later, I think it's in Xanathar's, it's called Lightning Lure, and you pull someone to you, and yep. then you smack them with a hammer. That yep. would be so cool. Ah, oh, you're like Ghost Rider. But I was thinking, action. I was thinking you, uh, you throw down lightning on them, like with a some sort of like lightning lore type deal, and then you throw your yep. hammer. You could always ray a fire. Or you could ray a. Uh, or you could uh, just be a, a douche and do like a necromancy cantrip. Feeling touch and then shoot it with a bow. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a melee attack. I apologize. No, it's yeah, just you, a weapon attack. Yeah, it's a weapon it's just attack. Just a weapon attack. Shit. Yeah, that'd be hot snow. No angel. Who's All right. here? Uh, we're at eighth level. Uh oh. We what get do we another get? one of these. We get a, an ability score increase, definitely. Or if your GM's super cool, you get another feat. So that's four, six, and eight. That's a total of. Imagine having possibly fucking three feats already. <laughs> I've done it. I Dudermont. Remember Dudermont? Dudermont yep. had so many feats. Yep. So many feats. He had all the feats. Uh, 11th level, uh, you get another attack. You hit a third time. What do you get at 12th level? Wait, 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 wait. You skipped. No, I did. Ninth, ninth level. Oh, I'm sorry. Nine, oh, yes, I'm sorry. I did. I, I went way ahead. Wow, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Beginning at ninth level, you can re-roll a saving throw that you fail. If you do so, you must use the new roll, and you can't use this feature again until you finish a long rest. You can use this feature twice between long rests, starting at 13th level, and three times beginning between long rests, starting at 17th level. So that goes up as well. Uh, and now we're on 10, uh, so we get martial archetype stuffs. 
Yes. So this is when you are a champion would get an additional fighting style. That's when you would get a second one as the champion fighter. But the uh, battle you do... masters. Oh, well, we think a of sec- things that we could do. I would. You could so do a second you, one, you took... like you archery mm-hmm. and like two protection. weapon fighting. Oh yeah, that's dope. That's Dritz. Yep, that's what I was thinking right yep. away. That's the first thing I thought. Yep. <laughs> or you could do defense and protection. Yeah, full on just become, tank mode. Yeah, activate. just just take damage for your friends. I'm good, Snow. What's How your are name, you, Panzer? What's up? I am wonderful. Just name your character Panzer to begin with. Why is your name Panzer? Right. Never mind. Have <laughs> Sentinel as your feet. Yep. Well, you'd have like four feet. So you have the Constitution one. You'd have <laughs> you just like start bulking up. <laughs> you did an accident. Uh oh. I don't want to know. I hope you didn't hurt yourself. <laughs> she's doing well, but she did an accident. I don't like it. Well, that means she's not paper trained. I guess I don't know. I guess yeah. That's yeah. all right. On to Battlemaster. Oh, I heard her wallet. I see. Oh. Uh, Improved combat superiority. At 10th level, your superiority dice turns into D10s. At 18th level, they turn into D12s. Ooh. Scandalous. Um, Level 10 for the Eldritch Knight. You get Eldritch Strike. You learn how to make your weapon strikes undercut a creature's resistance to your spells. When you hit a creature with a weapon attack, that creature has disadvantage on the next saving throw it makes against the spell you cast before the end of your next turn. You could theoretically shoot somebody with a longbow, and then it has disadvantage on the next fireball you cast on it. That's amazing. Because think about it. The longbow, you have insane amount of reach, and then a fireball is 300 feet. So, boom! That guy. Yep. Boom! It will be here tomorrow, Snow Angel. What, will, what is it? Ooh, what is it? Uh, that's what you get at level 10. What do we get at level 11 since I Your skipped a lot? Second extra attack. There it is. So now you One, can two, attack three. three times. One, two, three. Three arrows. All the hits. Level 12. Ability score improvement or feat if you DM is cool. Oh, boy. Oh, level 13. Ooh, a quad gap. Uh, 13, you get to use your Indomitable a second time. Yippee! I've heard of those mics. The Quadcast S. Yeah. Noise. I hope you love it. Uh, 14, what do we get? Uh, ability score improvement or speed if you DM in school? Stuff. We get the things. You know the things. You love the things. Level 15, martial archetype feature. Yeah, here we go. This is where it gets fun. Champion. Oh, boy. Superior critical. Your weapon attack score a critical hit on an 18 through 20. (laughs) I'm done. Uh, Okay. Uh, (laughs) Battlemaster. You get two more. Yeah, and you get D12. No, D10. Yep. Ooh. Yep. D10, D12s are a different one. Ah. Uh, 15 level, you get Relentless. When you roll initiative, you have no superiority dice remaining. You gain one. Woo! And you gain two more of those uh, cool maneuvers. The things. Uh, 15. You get Arcane Charge. This is awesome. You gain the ability... Uh, at 15th level to teleport up to 30 feet to an unoccupied space where you can you can see when you use your action surge. However, you can teleport before or after the additional action. So you could murder a dude uh, with your four, with, at that one point, three attacks? Three attacks. Uh, and then action surge, teleport to the dude who's trying to run away, and then kill that dude with yep. your three attacks. You use the Bifrost to teleport. Yes. There it is. And... There it is. <laughs> I hate uh, it. What do we get next level? 
Ability uh, score improvement uh, or feet. Seventeen. Next level. You can action surge twice. And yeah, indomitable like three times. Woo! 18th People level. Good stuff about that, Mike. What do you get as a champion? You get... Dang. Survivor. You attain the pinnacle of res re resilience in battle. At the start of each of your turns, you gain hit points equal to 5 plus your constitution modifier if you have no more than half your hit points left. You gain this benefit if you have zero hit points. You don't gain this benefit if you have hit zero hit points. That is silly. As a battle master, you get d12s. Yep. And stuff. That's it. Thing. And yeah, you get more maneuvers. Eldridge Knight. Woo. Improved war magic. When you use your action to cast a spell, you can make one weapon attack as a bonus action. Yeah, cast a spell. So you can fireball and then... You can do an actual spell, not a cantrip. Yeah! Burning level, hands, smack! Level 19? You get a best guy priest feet! <laughs> and at level 20, you get an extra attack, so you can All attack your smacks. fourth times. Yeah, smack, smack, smacky doos. Smack em, smack, smack a roo. Uh, so, yeah, Fighter in a nutshell is a very, very basic forward class that you can tweak with your subclass. Uh, and you can keep it basic or you can make it a little bit difficult because if you've already played the basic fighter, you might want to try some spells, try some other things. Um, it's also a very good class to dip into for your multiclassers. Like, if you're multi-classing the requisite is a strength or a dex that's 13 or more and most classes you're gonna have that if you're a, 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 a hitter right as opposed to like a wizard a wizard you don't normally see it but if you got one of them swole swole wizards then you can do it and then have the champion wizard that's kind of crazy but i'd like to see it because the um, three level dip into it having that champion 1920 to any punch that I have is dope. Yeah, it, it and once again, if you can make it that far with a character in a campaign, uh, it's it's gonna end up being a lot of fun playing that kind of like roll at eighteen, nineteen, or twenty to crit. Like on top of the all the maneuvers and stuff you could do, you probably you'll be critting all the time. Like <laughs> four attacks. You can bonus action cast spells possibly if you did Elder's Knight. Like <laughs> you don't have to worry about getting healed. Yeah. If you're the champion, you can yep. crit on an eighteen and oh oh would you look at that? My wounds are just healing then. I'll yep. let, me, let me put my finger back in its socket, I suppose. Yeah. It's kinda cool. The fun fun class. Um all right, let's uh let's go to a quick break. We'll be, back. we'll be back in uh about seven minutes. Probably earlier. Alright, we're back. How's it going? I hope everyone's still hanging out and having a good time. Enjoyed our talk about fighters. Are we ever going to uh, move off the Silver Coast? Like, to another plane? I mean, it's quite possible. Hey, one of these days, the Feywild might just open up. Did you hear about that the new campaign is oh. going to be... Uh, there's... It's going to be Feywild stuff. Oh, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. What are we talking about oh, now? Well, thanks, Frax. Uh, we're talking about Rangers, not the New York, but the ones in D&D. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's go for it, then. Let's get into it. Oh, uh, yeah. We're going to make a Ranger. Let's make it quick. <laughs> Uh, they well, are deadly hunters, they're independent adventurers, and uh, we're going to create one with a quick build. First, you make Dexterity your highest ability score, followed by Wisdom. Some rangers who focus on two-weapon fighting make Strength higher than Dexterity. Second, choose Dritzed. the Outlander background. Dritzed. Um, class, class features, features. you get uh, 1d10 per ranger level. Uh, you start with 10 plus con mod, and then 1d10 or 6 plus con mod plus ranger level after first. Per ranger level, sorry, not plus. 
Uh, you're proficient in light and medium armor and shields. All the weapons. Uh, you're proficient in strength and dex saving throws. No tools. And you get to pick from three skills, including animal handling, athletics, insight, investigation, nature, perception, stealth, and survival. You also get to pick from this list of equipment, uh, starting with scale mail or leather armor, depending on your ranger. Two short swords or two simple melee weapons. A dungeoneer's pack or an explorer's pack. And lastly, everybody gets a longbow and a quiver of 20 arrows. You'll see why soon enough. Uh, what else do you get at level At first level, you get favorite enemy and natural explorer. Your favorite enemy uh, is... Uh, you get to choose a type of favorite enemy. Avaritions, beasts, celestials, constructs, dragons, elementals, fays, uh, fiends, giants, monstrosities, oozids, plants, or undead. Um... Alternatively, you can select two races of humanoid, such as gnolls and orcs, as a favorite enemies. You have advantage on wisdom survival checks to track your favorite en enemies, as well as intelligence checks or to recall information about them. When you gain this feature, you also learn one language of your choice that is spoken by your favorite enemy, if they speak one at all. You choose one additional favorite enemy, as well as an associated language at 6th level and 14th level. As you gain levels, your choices should reflect the types of monsters you have encountered on your adventures. So yeah, by 6th level, eventually your DM will probably have challenged you with a dragon and, and you will have killed it because when you put things on paper, your players will kill them. Uh, and then you should add dragons to your favorite enemy because you killed the dragon. Um, you also get something called Natural Explorer. You're particularly familiar with one type of natural environment and you're adept at traveling and surviving in such reason. Three Jones. You get to choose from one of the following Arctic, Coast, Desert, Forest, Grassland, Mountain, Swamp, or the Underdark. See our Druid's list for the associated spells for that. Um, when you make an intelligence or wisdom check related to your favorite terrain, your proficiency bonus is doubled if you're using a skill that you're, you were, you're proficient in. And when traveling an hour or more in your favorite terrain, you gain the following benefit. Difficult terrain does not slow your group's travel. Your group cannot become lost by except by magical means, even when you're engaged in other activity while traveling, such as foraging, navigating, or tracking, you remain alert to danger. If you're traveling alone, you can move stealthily at a normal pace. When you forage, you find twice as much food as you normally would. While tracking other creatures, you also learn the exact number, their sizes, and how long ago they passed through the area. You also attain, a, learn additional favored terrain at types uh, 6 and 10th level. What up, Disto? Disto, hello. Good, good. Oh. Um, so, yeah. Um, a lot of... The Rangers get a lot of flack. They, uh, they, a lot of people think that the... the class in the PHB is weak. Is the weakest class. But... I think I played a ranger. I played, I played one of the um, unearth arcana ones, though. So I kind of had, I got to put some flavor into that, and it wasn't, the it wasn't, it wasn't like watered down. And it, and I think if you can play the character correctly, it doesn't matter how you are in battles. If you can, if rangers are supporting classes most of the time in 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 general. They're the lookouts. They're the ones that are hiding out in the background. They're all the, like, you know what I mean? Like, they are kind of stealthy and, and they're outlanders. Like, that's, that's just how they are. We're going we're gonna to talk about, we're going to talk about the ranger class right now. Uh, well, I'm it's gonna, just, I'm it's hard ahead. because, it's hard because I played one. And also we're talking about, like, the first two things that favorite enemy and natural explorer were two of the things that they, they changed for the unearth arcana. Uh, Ranger, and looking at these now, and I'm I'm looking at like I don't think they're that bad. Like <laughs> they're not that bad. No, they're honestly, like the Ranger class is made for the player character to be able to interact with the DM without having to interact with the goddamn DM. Like right, the Ranger is as weak as your DM. Like if you have a a a a, a, a Ranger at level one whose favorite enemy is giants. Throw a giant that way. Make it peaceful, because you'll murder a group of level one characters, but yeah. 
make it an encounter because they got things to use. Maybe this, how, this how did he, giant lived in the mountains. Yeah, how did he fit, become lost. a favorite enemy? Like, that's the thing. Yeah, like, work something out. That's what I did with Griff, because his favorite enemy was goblins. And I was like, well, you're going to deal with a lot of goblins, and you got, they love Droop. And I was like, well, shit. This shouldn't have happened, but it did. Because yep. your Droop voice was just so wonderful. Uh, but fighting style at level two. Uh, uh, it's kind of watered down from the fighter. Uh, the fighter, yep. only at four, not a really a protector or a great weapon fighter. Archery, same with two two attack rolls that you make with ranged rep- weapons. Defense, you get one to your AC. Dueling, while you're melee, uh, wielding a melee weapon in one hand and no other weapons, you get a plus two to damage rolls with it. And then two weapon fighting. When you engage in two weapon fighting, you can add your ability modifier to the damage of the second attack. It's really not that bad, depending on how you want to keep your range. Uh, and then, oh, I get to have Thundercat read the spell casting. Thundercat, there's spell casting. You get spell casting. Uh, your spell slots. The ranger's table shows how many spell slots you are able to have. And uh, you, uh, to cast these spells, you must expand a slot of the spells level or higher. You gain all expanded spell slots when you finish the long rest. So you get at second level, you get two spells known and you get two spell slots. Pretty straight. Third though. level, three and three. Fourth. Fourth level spells three and three. Um, it's pretty straightforward. The spells that you know are on the ranger's list. Um, and these aren't like the wizard or the druid or the cleric. These are spells that you know all the time. It's like the uh, like the ones that you have prepared for the druid that you don't count against you. You always know your spells like the bard would. Yeah. Or the uh, warlock would. Your DC is made the same way, except it's with wisdom. Like the druid. And their spell attack modifiers with wisdom as well. Like the druid. And so, yeah, you would get two spells uh, known most of the time. It's probably Hunter's Mark and Cure Wounds. Yep. Those are normally the first two. Um, Hunter's Mark is a great ranger spell. Yeah, it's a bonus action to mark your pro- target, and then you get to do an extra D6 worth of damage on top of it, and then you can if always they, track it. You yeah, if they run away, it. you can track them for like 12 like for an hour for or something. Yeah. Yep. Uh, but now we get into your subclasses, your archetypes for the ranger. Third uh, level. Let's, let's start off with the hunter. Uh, this is where your, your hunter becomes, a, your ranger becomes a fighter, basically. Because Emulating the hunter archetype means accepting your place as a bulwark between civilization and the terrors of the wilderness. Uh, so at third level, you get hunter's prey. You can choose one of the following three. Uh, Colossus Slayer. When you hit a creature with a weapon attack, the creature takes an extra D8 damage if it's below its hit point maximum. You can deal this damage once per turn. Uh, or you could take Giant Killer when a large or a creature within five feet of you hits or misses with your attack. You can use your reaction to attack that creature immediately after its attack, provided that you can see it. Uh, Horde Breaker. This is the fun one to have with a longbow. Once on each of your turns, when you make a weapon attack, you can make another attack within, with the same weapon against a different creature that is within five feet of the original target and within range of your weapon. So if <laughs> you have a group of dudes and you're in a tree, you can literally be Hawkeye. It's awesome. Yep. I don't understand why the ranger gets a bunch of flack because you can do some really cool stuff. It's just you're limited on the cool stuff that you can do. You are you are a support class that doesn't gets to shine outside of battle. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then there's Beastmaster, uh, Ranger's Companion. Yeah! At third Beast level, Master. you gain a Beast Companion that accompanies you on your adventures and is trained to fight alongside you. Choose a beast that is no lar- larger than medium and has a challenge rating of quarter or lower. <laughs> uh, Appendix D presents statistics. Oh, that's not important. Uh, add your proficiency bonus to the beast AC, pack rolls, and damage rolls, as well as any, t- uh, any saving throws and skills it is proficient in. Its hit point maximum equals the hit point number in its stat block or four times your ranger level. Uh, whichever is higher, like any creature, it can spend hit dice during a short rest to regain hit points. The beast obeys your commands as it best it can. It takes its turn on your initiative, though it doesn't take an action unless you command it to. On your turn, you can verbally command the beast where you want it to move. Uh, 
Uh, you can use your action to verbally command it to take the attack, dash, disengage, dodge, or help action. Once you uh, have the extra attack feature, you can make one weapon attack yourself when you command the beast to make the attack action. That's pretty cool. Uh, and if you are incapacitated or absent, the beast acts on its own, focusing on protecting you and itself. The beast never requires your command to use its reaction, such as when making an opportunity attack. While traveling through your favorite terrain with only the beast, you can move stealthily at a normal pace. If the beast dies, you can obtain a new companion by spending 8 hours magically bonding with a beast that isn't hostile to you and that meets the requirements. So, That's yeah. sad, though. Um, you, don't, you don't want it your... It is kind of sad. <laughs> um, but it, it turns an owl into something that's kind of beefy, which is always kind of cool, because owls have flyby. And they can fly by you, smack you, and you can't do anything back to them. Hi, Wing! Hi, Wing! Um, and that's it for your ranger archetypes. There's only the two. Um, well, they added, reason why. they added more, because that was what people were mad about as well. They were like, oh, there's only two, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah, the people, people raged. Uh, oh, boy. <laughs> What do you got for? Feetsta. Yep. Uh, fifth level, you get the extra attack, so that's kind of neat. Just talked about that. Uh, yep. Sixth level, you get another favorite enemy and another natural exploration improvement. Uh, yep, you get another one at sixth. Seventh level is where we get into more ranger archetypes. Because they're kind of weird. A uh, hunter gets defensive tactics. At 7th level, you gain one of the following features of your choice. Escape the horde. Opportunity attacks against you are made with disadvantage. Multi-attack oh. defense. When a creature hits you with an attack, you gain a plus 4 bonus to AC against all subsequent attacks made by that creature for the rest of the turn. So anything oh. that has more than one attack. Um, deal will. You I have can. advantage on saving throws against being frightened. Uh, that's also it. There, the seventh level ones are pretty good. Uh, who controls the mob? The the loudest motherfucker who started it. Uh, seventh <laughs> level for the beast master. You get exceptional training beginning at seventh level. On any returns when you, your beast companion doesn't attack, you can use a bonus action to command the beast to take the dash, disengage, dodge, or help action. So if it doesn't attack, then it has the bonus action ability to do any of those. In addition, the beasts now attack count as magical for the purposes of overcoming resistance and immunity to non-magical attacks and damage. That's how I wear it. That's how I roll away. Zero to a hundred real quick. Not Drake. <laughs> what do you get at eighth level? Uh, you get land stride. <laughs> you mother. Yeah. Ha! How you like that? Tell, us about, la tell us about land stride uh, first. I will. So, starting at 8th level, as opposed to other things that you get at this level, moving through non-magical difficult terrain costs you no extra movement. You can also pack through non-magical plants without being slowed by them, or and without taking damage from them if they have thorns, spines, or similar hazards. In addition, you have advantage on saving throws against plants that are magically created or manipulated to impede movement, such as those created by the Entangle spell. Kind of some druidy th things at there. What else do you get at 8th level? Ability score improvement or a feed if your DM is cool. Yeah. yeah. Woo! Woo! Uh, ninth level. Nothing. You get, you get level. You get spells. spells. Yeah. Uh, tenth level. You get to improve your natural explorer while Thundercat explains what the next cool thing is that you get as a ranger. Hide in plain sight. Starting at 10th level, you can spend one minute creating camouflage for yourself. You must have access to fresh mud, dirt, plants, soot, or any other naturally occurring materials in which you can create camouflage. Once you are camouflaged in this way, you can try to hide by pressing yourself up against a solid surface such as a tree or wall that is at least as tall and wide as you are. You gain a plus 10 bonus to dexterity stealth checks as long as you remain there without moving or taking actions. Once you move or take an action or a reaction, you must camouflage yourself again to gain this benefit. <laughs> so funny it it's one of the funny class <laughs> i am a tree i am a bush <laughs> wait i actually am a bush <laughs> um 
Wing's not wrong. This is certainly it's certainly common sense at that point. There's a dragon. Don't move. <laughs> he can't uh, see me. But now we move on to 11th level where we get cool stuff for our ranger. This is where the ranger starts to shine, in my opinion. With your multi-attack, you gain one of the following features of your choice. You can either take volley. You can use your action to make a ranged attack at against any number of creatures within 10 feet of a point you can see within your weapon's range. You must have ammunition for each target as normal, and you can must make separate attack rolls for each target. That is dirty. That is a hail of arrows. Yep. Pair that with board breaker, it's even meaner. Or whirlwind attack. You can use your action to make a melee attack against any number of creatures within five feet of you with a separate attack roll for each target. That's the whirling dervish of attack rolls. Take your swords and spin around with them. Yup, yup. Uh, at Beast 11th Master. level, 11th level Beastmaster, you get Bestial Fury. You command your Beast Companion to take the, ax take the attack action. The Beast can make two attacks, or it can take the multi-attack action if it has that action. That's pretty sweet. Yup. Yup. Uh, to win. And then we... Oh, no. You get an ability score improvement or a feat if your DM's cool. Uh, and then at 13th level... More spells. Yeah. 14th level, you get uh, another favored enemy while Thundercat tells you about the next. <laughs> vanish. You get Vanish at 14th level. You can hide, use the hide action as a bonus action on your turn. Also, you can't be tracked by non magical means unless you choose to leave a trail. But wait, you get half the benefits of Pass Without a Trace and you get half the benefits of Cunning Action as a Rogue? That's yes mean at late level yep. um, I believe 15th level you cap off at your cool stuff for your archetypes so you have your superiors hunter defense for your final hunter uh, evasion which is something that the rogue has and it's awesome you should take it when you're subjected to an effect such as red dragon's fiery breath or a lightning bolt spell that allows you to make a deck save to take only half damage you instead take no damage if you succeed and only half damage if you fail there is also Stand against the tide. When a hostile creature misses you with a melee attack, you can use your reaction to force that creature to repeat the same attack against another creature of your choice, other than itself. Or lastly, you can take the other thing that rogues also have, which is uncanny dodge. When an attacker that you can see hits you with an attack, you can use your reaction to half the attack's damage against you. That's a very, very hard, hard decision between those two. I would take evasion. At Beastmaster, at 15th level, you can cast a spell targeting yourself. You can also affect your beast companion with that spell, if that beast is within 30 feet of you. So if you uh, cure your own wounds, you can heal your owl if it's swirkling about your head. Yep. Uh, or your, or your dog. Uh, 16th level is an ability score improvement or a feat. 17th level is a 5th level spell slot. Yippee! 18th level, 18th level is, is something. Feral Senses. Cool. You gain preternatural senses that help you fight creatures you can't see. When you attack a creature you can't see, your inability to see it doesn't impose disadvantage on your attack rolls against it. You are also aware of the location of any invisible creature within 30 feet of you, provided that the creature isn't hidden from you and you aren't blinded or deafened. You can smell you them. You are a bat. You, can, he, you have sonar location. You can hear their heart beating. Uh, 19th level, you get things that we've said over and over and over and over again on this podcast. You should be familiar. It is ability score improvement or a feat. And then lastly... You get Foe Slayer. When you become an unparalleled hunter of your enemies, uh, once on each of your turn, you can add your Wisdom modifier to your attack or the damage roll of an attack you make against one of your favorite enemies. You can choose to use this feature before or after the roll, but before any effects of their roll are applied. So if you hit a dragon with a crit, 
and then you're level 20 because you're doing some crazy Dragon War stuff, uh, you can just say, oh, I want to add my Wisdom modifier, which is probably a plus 5 at that point, and then your Dex modifier, which is probably a plus 5 at that point, so that's plus 10. That's almost a sharpshooter. That's mean. Yep. Rangers are pretty... They're underrated. They're all, they're, Rangers are as good as their DM. Yeah, I'll say and, and I'll say and I'll say that the the players handbook ones are aren't the best, but the hunter one is pretty good. The beastmaster one's pretty cool because it it's all depending on how you want to flavor your ranger. You don't do a lot of damage, yep. but you can attack two things at once. You can heal somebody else and then tell your dude to attack. Yep. I don't know. I had fun playing my ranger. The one that I played was like a shadow one. I forget what the name of it was. Would you allow uh, a ranger to use the help action with his canine companion to do weird canine dog stuff to try to confuse the enemy? Like yes. chase its tail or something. Okay, all day. Perfect. See? Right? It's, all, it's about that relationship. All day. All day. Um, did, you never played a ranger, right? Mm. Once I was, uh, I've played just about everything except for a straight fighter, like the champion fighter. Uh, but yeah, I played a horde breaker. I play, I played the the hunter one from the book. It was kind of vanilla. Uh, standing on its legs like Rory Calhoun. I was wondering the same thing for a minute, Wing. And then when he said chase his tail around, I knew what he meant. Yeah, distracting things like speaking in abyssal. Not that kind of weird canine stuff, Wing. Yeah, no. No, that's, that's a whole different podcast. That's D&G After Dark. <laughs> <laughs> On our Patreon. <clears throat> Speaking of which, uh, that's all we got for the like three gnomes in a trench coat kind of stuff. That's right, Vandal. Uh, exactly. Speaking of Patreon, what do we got going on this week? Uh, tomorrow is Warzone Wednesday. That's right. At 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Ish. Yep. Yes. Okay. Uh, Thursday is console night at TBD time on yes. Vandal um, Stream. I'm um, Hello. Hello, How are you? How are you? Uh, that's, that's the near future. What else do we have on Friday? What's on Friday? We just we just finished talking about the Rangers in Burren. We're uh, we're talking about what we got going on the rest of the week right now. Um, just but you, it. but you can check all of our stuff out that we have up to now. Uh, biggity diggity biggity links there. I'm if a you wizard. want, and we'll uh, we have we've been talking about classes the last uh, three four weeks. So five. five weeks now, five weeks now. Wow. Yeah, five. Five weeks now. Yeah. A little over a month. Yeah, so if you want to go back and see any of that Hi. stuff, it's all there. Didn't see you there. In the doobly doos. Um, yeah, and we do it every Tuesday at 6.30. Thank you for the, follow. for the follow. Hi, didn't see you there. So check out that stuff. We'll, uh, we'll definitely be live again tomorrow night and Friday night and Saturday night. So um, Friday night, we don't have any... Is it... A second community night? I don't even know what we're doing. We're follow doing something. Yeah, yeah, follow us we'll, in the doobly We're doing just. something. We're doing something on Friday night. Definitely doing something on Friday night. We'll figure that out. Yes, we are. Oh, we, uh, oh look at the video. Look at the video. I can see it. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, there it oh, is. Look at this. Oh, I don't know how to forget you. I can, I can see the video and your disapproving face on the other side. Uh. <laughs> I pressed the play so we can hear it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared. That's so good. Um, so, and then Saturday night we're doing the same thing. We're going to try to bring something 
forward for you guys. We'll be doing something live Saturday night and Friday night. Um, yeah, tables. I think that's it. Monday we Monday Monday we have our survival night, which is um, Monday. We're playing raft, and we're on day. We'll be on day seven. We just finished off Devin, the shark. And we're gonna name our new shark on Monday. We've hung them up so already. You have not been playing for a ten day yet. N oh, in the game we're on day thirty something. But oh, okay, so this is this in is, our this in our time. We've only on day seven next week. And is that real time or fantasy time? Is that fantasy time? Because that's still not out a week. Because ten days a week. I'm talking like fantasy, like right now, fantasy. D &D fantasy. Oh. Yeah, no, seven yeah. days. Yeah. Almost out of ten day. <laughs> In game is day seventy. Oh, jeez. Seven ten Even days. More. There you go. Seven ten days, yeah. <laughs> Four score and seven ten days ago. You kill the shark and name it shark bake. Ooh ha. Uh, what uh <laughs> what else what else do you got going on? You playing games tomorrow? Uh, yes, uh, while we decide on uh, what we will be doing on Friday and Wednesday, I, I take those days to play retro games. I'm going to try and get that goddamn Grand Prix fucking stupid achievement doing two minutes. For Kirby? And then I'm going to play some Pokemon. Yeah, oh, dude, it's so mad. <laughs> so mad. Uh, speed running in Kirby with retro is hard. But, but then I'm going to switch over to Pokemon because I think I'm going to try and badge all the Pokemon games before I badge anything else just because I want to have them all right there. If you like I any of uh, the retro stuff Patch is starting to do, go check them out, GM Patch Nasty, on Twitch. Hello. Uh, I'm playing most of my, spending most of my time on this channel, but if you want to check out my other stuff, I am Thundercat0420. I just started my first two TikToks ever. Oh, it was amazing. <laughs> he popped um, his TikTok but, cherry, y'all. But, uh... If you want to catch me on that, it's me, uh, and we'll, uh, we're going to raid over to someone, I think, right? Is that what pop, we're doing pop, now? Pop, 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 pop. What are we talking about next week? Talk about classes next week. <laughs> oh, I know, we got, we're talking about ability, more left. We're talking about ability scores at level four, at level eight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, we are talking about two last classes. Uh, paladins. Rogues and, paladins and rogues. And rogues. Let's get sneaky. Let's get... Let's get religious and sneaky, y'all. <laughs> let's get. Let's steal uh, the holy grail. What's the what's the word? Let's get honorable. Let's get and dishonorable. Let's get, let's get dangerous. Sorry, I had, as soon as you said let's get honorable, I was like, fuck it. All right. Now. now who are now, we gonna rate? Now who are we gonna rate? Uh, people are playing Fuzzrab still doing stuff. All right, let's go to Fuzzy. Oh, he's ha farting about. What is he doing? Hold on. I want to see where he is first. I've played this game so many times. Oh, he's at Butter's dad house. Yes, let's go. All right. Yes. Hold on. Let's get over to our ending screen. Oh, yes. Uh, so I had a, a song prepared for tonight because we were doing Fighters and Rangers. I'm sorry that you can blame the Suns Out, Guns Out, Thundercat over here. Uh, After uh, you. He is, for, for the audio listeners, he is wearing a uh, Baywatch tank top. The people stand in the darkness, afraid to step into the light. Some people need to help somebody when the edge of surrender's inside. Don't you worry. It's gonna be all right. <laughs> and I'm always ready. I won't let you out of my side. Do 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 do. I am Wendy. I am Wendy. Never you hear. No, don't you fear. I am Wendy. Forever and always. Wendy is here. This is when you hit the button so I can stop pointing at the camera now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs>